And I'm going to begin a new recording because we're going to be transitioning topics a little bit um, that, again, will get you thinking about tipping points. But not just tipping points here. Lock-in in different possible equilibria, situations where the behavior of the model is very different and we where we can get persistently adverse effects and on a on an ongoing basis, persistent basis, an abiding basis, if we're not careful to head it off early. We're going to talk about tipping points, but tipping points with special gravity to them, where if we slip up, if we miss the boat, if we let the system cross a certain threshold, a transom into a tipping point, we get an adverse situation that's so much more difficult to remediate after the fact compared to how easy it would have been to head off from the get-go. If that reminds you of some exercises with an ABM earlier, it is with good reason. And we'll see now a simple SD characterization of a similar phenomenon. So I'm going to use this exercise to build that understanding of lock-in to remind you of it. But I'm also going to use it to exercise some other points of understanding, see how persistent cycles can emerge from models like this, get you to reason mechanistically about them, reason about dimensions in ways that help you craft your, your formulae. So let's bend ourselves to this task, if we may. Okay, so um, we're going to take a look at this model. And uh, I'm going to stop this. And I'm going to save it as version 6. And I want you to follow along with this. Uh, and there will be a hand in this um, at the end of your own work. It has to be your own work, OK? OK, so um, we're going to, again, share our screen here. And you'll notice that we have a thing called default recovery time, OK? Um, and uh, I'm going to say here, uh, I'm going to rename this to be time, I'm using a bit of terms of art, time until present for treatment. Or present means basically go for treatment, appear for, for treatment. I just typed that, I'm gonna press control enter um, and it will let me refactor this and uh, mumble. It's not giving me the nice button app. Okay. Um, okay, I'm not sure. Maybe it's low in memory or something. Um, but, oh, oh, that's odd. Okay. Time until present for treatment. There we go. And I, I guess I won't do the refactoring. Um, and I'm going to change this mean time until recovery to be time until present for treatment, okay? What's the dimension of this? Or Yeah, what's the dimension of this? What's Is it a length? Is it an area? Is it a person? What What is it? It's a what? It is a, guess from its name, time. It's a time, yes, exactly, it's a time. It's time, it's measured in time. This is gonna be important, okay? So we're going to drag this over here and give it a bit of real estate. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Okay. Now we're going to do something important here. We're going to endogenize the time until recovery. And this is going to apply for certain types of infections, which are, as we call them, treatment mediated, meaning, uh, sorry, where recovery is treatment mediated, meaning, meaning that you don't recover until you're treated. Now, that's an approximation. There's many infections like uh, bacterial infections, certain types of urinary tract infections and, and chlamydia and gonorrhea and, and others which, which fall in this class. By and large, there's normally some route to natural treatment, uh, natural 
recovery, but um, in some infections, it's it's very difficult. So we're going to have this mean time until uh, present for treatment, which is not going to change. And then we're going to take account how long they have to wait for treatment. So so they show up and then they've got to wait. It's imagine you're going to the emergency room. And these days it's quite a quite a big thing. Don't just think it's Canada. It's here, too. Right here. It's Mass General Hospital, one of the top hospitals in the U.S. Um, you see the same thing. See it in Beverly Hospital, where my dad started treatment. I mean, it's really long waiting times often in the emergency room. It's a systems problem, not because of problems in the emergency room per se, because the wards are full and the wards are full because can't discharge patients, the community, et cetera. It's a systems problem. So we're going to take that into account, how long people spend waiting. Well, you tell me, if we want to endogenize that, if we want to take into account how long might people spend waiting because there's other people who need to be treated in front of them, before them, what things in the model might affect how long they spend waiting? The number of infected, exactly. So the more infected people there are, the more each new infected will have to spend waiting, right, to, to recover. If there are 100 people in front of you in the emergency room, you're going to wait longer. Hmm? Okay, so here we go. We're going to have a, we're going to parse this out, factor this out into a, um, into here, time waiting for treatment. And their total time that it takes for them to recover is going to reflect their time um, uh, until they present for treatment plus the time waiting for treatment. And maybe it to be very clear, once present, right? Once they present, or you could read it as once present. Okay, uh, once they show up, right? So it takes some time for them to get in. And once they're there, they, they have to wait. Um, for a healthcare worker. Okay, so what I heard from Patrick, who, who uh, is, and he acutely observes that this depends on the number of infectives. Good. What else, pray tell, might it depend on? What else might it depend on? Well, we're gonna have a number of healthcare workers, beautiful. Beautiful, Rushil. My hat is off to you. So it's going to be, we're going to have a count of healthcare workers. Now you see we're changing the scope of the model. Before, the meantime until recovery was essentially what sort of, when we talk about dividing up a model into endogenous, exogenous, ignored, what, what sort of quantity did meantime until recovery fall into? Before, what was it before? It was and endogenous, exogenous, or ignored. It was exogenous. We told it to the model. I mean, we, we did it through this, and it just was set to equal that. Now we're endogenizing it. We're making it vary with the state of the model, right? It's endogenous. It's generated by the model, how long people have to wait. Okay, so here we go. Time waiting for treatment once present will depend on the number of healthcare workers. And guess what else it might depend on? What, what other assumption might it depend on? What other thing would we need to know? If we want to figure out how long people stay waiting, we have a certain number of infectives that we've got to wait for to be treated and a certain number of healthcare workers, what do we need to know? Okay, I, I, I see time for treatment, but let's sharpen that. Time for to treat what? All these infectives? Okay, how, how quickly, I love it, I love it, I love it. Sophia nailed it. How quickly a healthcare worker can treat a single patient? That's exactly it. This indeed 
is an encouraging sign of the new generation. Um, okay, so what we need is a representation that is of, and I'm going to be, I'm sorry, I'm just going to be brutal on the name. So you don't, it doesn't have to be brutally confusing. Healthcare worker, oops, sorry, healthcare worker, worker, by the way, I would call this HCW within our group, but that's fine. Time uh, per patient. So how long, just as Sophia said, how long does it take for them to treat each patient? And we're going to set this. Does anyone remember what the time unit of these models are? Is what's the time unit of this model? Days. So suppose I wanted to say it's a quarter of an hour per patient that it takes to 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 um, treat them. Um, quarter of an hour. How how could I express this in days? A quarter of an hour. 0.25 hours. How would I? What's? Give me a formula for it in days. Yeah. Okay. That's good. that's good, Rachel. I don't dispute that. Uh, um. Okay. One over ninety six. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Oh, this is what I was looking for. Um. But that's fine. Uh, all those are probably yes. Those are correct. Yes. Those are correct. Anyway, it's this. It's this. Um. This is a bit more intention revealing because it shows where that number came from. One over 96 is good, but it begs the question, well, why 96? You know, what? where'd that come from? What was the thinking behind it? Uh, 0. 0.0104, similarly. This is a bit more intentional revealing. It says, oh, okay, there's some sort of thinking here going on about 24 probably hours per day and 0. 0.25. Um, and by the way, if I were really careful, I'd probably make this hours per day and and make this 0. 0.25 divided by hours per day and in fact you can do here um uh you could do yes you can do what is it wait hour i think it's hour not hours um mumble yeah yes it's hour uh, yeah and and actually the wade um sorry this would be times hours, right? Because it's 0.25 hours. This is another way to express it, right, Wade? That's correct. Like the hour function returns in whatever time units of the model exactly. we're using exactly. what a one hour is equal to. Exactly. So this is like expresses an hour in in units of days. Um, so this would be like you know, one twenty fourth of a day, right? Um, so a bit over point 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 oh four, um, and um, and this is uh, point two five hours. So this is kind of nicely intention revealing. Okay, um, the 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 net effect of this this is a number in days. Okay, um, so in order to calculate the Time waiting for treatment once they're present or once they present. Um, we need number of healthcare workers, infectives, and healthcare worker time per patient. Okay, great. Mm -mm. Okay, we're all set up for a glorious formula. And you're gonna tell me what formula to to put in. What what's what's the formula? Well, okay, let's think about the units. Let's think about the dimensions here. What's the dimensions of healthcare workers? We'll call it H, okay? It's, we'll call it the number of healthcare workers H. How about healthcare worker time per patient? What are the units of that? Or what are the dimensions of that? Well, what would, what would, Healthcare worker time, like, or person days would be like person times days. It's like a hundred, maybe maybe it's a hundred person days. So that would be like one person over a hundred days, or a hundred people over one day would be a hundred person days. So what is healthcare worker? Um, yeah, but okay, we're gonna call 
healthcare worker age. So a healthcare worker time would be what? It would be healthcare worker times days is healthcare worker time. I said person days is person times time. And again, it could be one person over a hundred days, or it could be hundred people over one day would be a hundred person days. That'd be person times time is the dimension. So if we have healthcare worker um, time, um, it's uh, healthcare, it, the, the dimensions of it are healthcare workers times time, times days, in other words, in this case, divided by patient. Mm. So this is actually of unit, and we could actually put it here. This is of unit H times time divided by person, by number of patients. Okay. Um, uh, so so uh, healthcare worker time per patient um, is of uh, is of this. This is how many healthcare worker um, healthcare worker hours there are per patient. Okay, great. And then we have healthcare workers. Guess what? That so the unit here is what. H, okay. I'm I'm seeing Rachel thinking and Mark H. Yeah, it's it's that's good. Okay. So you're gonna tell me. Um and and uh, infective is units units are person. Mm -hmm. Um by the way, in, in this you can actually specify units. We're not gonna use the, the formal thing there. Okay. So this is persons. This is healthcare worker, as, which is uh, units H. And I'm going to initially set 50, five, zero healthcare workers. Please pay attention to that. I have a feeling someone's going to ask me later. 50 healthcare workers initially, five, zero. Pay attention, pay attention. Okay. And, and then we have healthcare worker times per patient. So what's the What's the uh, units or so we need something time waiting. This has to be of units. This is of units. What this is our of, of dimensions. What? What is it of dimensions? It's a read the name. It's a what? It's a time. It's OK. Good. So we need a formula that will give us the time. What is that formula? Well, let's think it through. We have infectives, which are measured as what? What, what are the dimensions of infectives? Let's think it through. Let's think this through. Okay, dimensions of infective. So we have, this is our building blocks. These are our pieces. We've got a, it's like a jigsaw puzzle. We've got to put them together to give us the time. So infectives, R of dimension P, right? Mm -hmm. Healthcare workers are, are of dimension, I'll, I'll put it like this, or, or better yet, um, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, normally we would put this thing around that, but that's fine. Healthcare worker, as long as it's clear we're dealing with the dimension. Healthcare workers, we call it H. And then do you remember healthcare worker Worker time per patient is healthcare worker days per patient. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're going to give me a formula for for these that are going to be. It's going to give me a time. What is it? What's the formula going to be that's going to give us a time that combines these? What formula would give us a time? Okay. So, so uh, uh, Akash says, healthcare worker time per patient, and Rashil is putting something together. Okay, time per patient, that's this. And then we multiply by infectives. Good. And this is sounding good. So you multiply something of this dimension times infectives. What do you get back? Something of dimension what? What's, what's this thing? 
This is of dimension, is of dimension what? Please tell me. HT, yeah. Healthcare worker time, healthcare worker days. Good. Okay. So all we need to do is divide it by what? By, what do we need to divide it by? Yeah, we need to divide it by an H, which is given by what formula? Or, or sorry, by what variable will give us an H? Healthcare workers, right? Healthcare workers. Yeah, these ones here. Huh? That's our jigsaw puzzle, right? That's our puzzle pieces. We're just sticking them together. And so you say, follow your notes. Um, you're, you're, you're finding out how they have to fit together to give something of the right dimension. And let's think this through a little bit, right? Um, if we have so much healthcare worker time per patient, let's suppose that each patient requires, you know, um, let's imagine each patient requires a full day. Mm -hmm. And we have 50 patients we've got to see. But we also have 50 healthcare workers who can work on those patients in parallel. 50 healthcare workers, 50 patients, and each patient takes a day. How long will be needed to treat those patients? So again, yeah, one day. If we have 50 people to be treated, 50 healthcare workers, and each person requires one day to be treated, we can finish the whole thing in one day, right? Mm. Mm. Let's suppose that each person requires two days, and we have just one person who needs treated, and we have... Um, or we have, yeah, uh, two days and we have two healthcare workers and two infectives. The idea is, well, we could treat them, um, uh, we can treat them in two days, right? Um, uh, imagine if we have only, we have 50 uh, infectives to be treated. We need one day each and all we have is one healthcare worker. How long will it take? If we have 50 infectives to work through, each one requires a day and we have only one healthcare worker, how long will it take? 50 days. Yeah, so this seems pretty reasonable. So we'll stick it in there. Hmm? Okay, okay. And it it exhibits, um, uh, okay, uh, uh, yeah. It's complaining, uh, what is it complaining about? Um, uh, uh, click to see, okay, infective, is okay so why is this uh oh oh my goodness um no okay you need to remove spaces yeah 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 yeah, yeah. dumb thing okay thank you um okay so we'll put this in there healthcare hey come on come on healthcare worker time per patient times infectives yeah um times healthcare care workers, right? There we go. Okay. Okay. So that's the time waiting for treatment once they're present or once they present. And there's time until they present for treatment. What's the total time until they recover? What's the total time? Until, oh, did I, did I, did I put in times? Oh, my goodness. By the way, if we enabled formal unit checking, it would have flagged that. Of course, it has to be. Would this give something of the correct dimension? Would that give something of the correct dimension? If I had done that, would that be correct dimensionally? No, it's not correct dimensionally. Oh, it would be horrible. It would be horrible. Are you kidding? It would be, it'll be like, it would be H squared T. <laughs> it would be like... Healthcare workers times healthcare worker time, uh, healthcare worker days, or something like that, which would be, yeah, not 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 incorrect. Okay, great. So, what do we need to do if 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 we want to calculate the total mean time until recovery? What do we need to do? What do we need to do? We have to calculate the total mean time until recovery. We need to add what and what? 
Yeah, time until present plus time waiting. You just factorize it, ladies and gentlemen, factorize it into its natural pieces. Each fits together to give you a sense of all. So we have the time until present to treatment. And then what? What do I add it to? What do I add to it? Yeah, okay. Well, I'll put you out of your misery. Yeah, time time until waiting. Um, uh, time, time waiting for treatment once present. Okay, great. Okay, so now we have our model with a new scope. How do you think this will change the situation? Anyone? How will it change the situation? So before we had three days until everyone was treated. Now we've endogenized it. We have the time that they spend waiting it's three days minimum, but then you also have this time waiting for, okay, there's a positive feedback. I love that, Rachel. Awesome, awesome, awesome. What's the positive feedback here? Ah, so what's the positive feedback? Give me a narrative of the feedback, roughly. The more infectives there are, the what? I'm starting it for you. The more infective there are, causes more delays for treatment, which means more people remain infective, which means more people getting infected while they remain infective. Okay, good. And yes, infectives lengthen the time of recovery. Mm -hmm. um, uh, depending on the size, of, if fewer infectives can reduce total infection, more infectives and longer. Yes. Okay. So how do you think it will affect the dynamics that we observe? I heard before that maybe it will lead to very high levels of infection. Okay. Any any thinking? More people infected for longer? Okay. Will it just go and go up, rise up, and stay very high? Lock in to a very high number? Will it ever come down? slowly come down okay this is a little bit hard to think about so let's let's run this mm -hmm. let's run the baseline there we go and i think what we'll do is oh, we're going to probably have to extend the the time frame of this model um mm. What's going on here? What's going on there? Slowly come down. Mm. So what do you think the waiting time will look like? If I look at waiting time, so this is infective. If I look at waiting time, what do you think that will look like? Okay. Uh, how would it compare with the number of infective? Okay. Yeah, here's here's the waiting time. Yeah. Does that look familiar? Yeah. It looks familiar because it follows pretty much in fact it was I say pretty much because it's not quite, it also has what shaping it. It also has the mean time until they present for treatment, right? So it's like Proportional to this plus um, minimum time of, of three. Okay. And that leads to, so this is like mean time to recovery. Remember, what was the default value we had for the baseline or for the original, for the model before this change? What was the mean time until recovery? Three. Now it goes up to, to what? What does it go up to now? It goes up to over 60, right? Yeah. Okay, let's extend the time frame. We're we're gonna we're gonna make the the time frame for this model longer. Okay. Um and to do this, we'll have to futz with some silly things, but um first of all, we're going to we're gonna display up to 
we're going to do 20, 20 years, okay? Um, so, and so this is going to be, we're going to only do it every one day. Every, every one day, it's going to be updated. And it's going to be 7,300 samples and it'll be 7,300 days. What is 7,300 days? Anyone? In years, roughly? That's about 20 years. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Um, right? 365 days is a year. 3650 would be, would be, uh, uh, it would be 10 years. Um, yeah. Um, okay. Uh, so, so we're doing that. And then we got to set each of these. And this is just a bit of TDM. Forgive me, but I'm going to set the stop time for all of these to 7,300. Notice I set that graph to update every day. Not, not every, I, I, I just want to remind people because it's easy to miss. I just set this to be recurrence time for the data update to be one days on the graph. Just want to make sure people get that so you don't have to say, oh, mine looks like a snake. It's it's sort of just twisting around and it doesn't display all of it. Okay, sorry, it's just time to make the donuts. You, you just got to go through and a bit of, bit of tedium might help if you copy it and then you don't have to type it each time. You just paste it. And Bob's your uncle. Um, okay, uh, there we go. Uh, okay, great. So what do you think we'll see over 20 years? Mm -hmm. What, pray tell, will we see over 20 years? Mm hmm Okay. Okay, we see it initially go very high, and then it remains at quite a high level, where the mean time until recovery is is fifteen. Okay, it's, so that's good. Let's let's imagine that we go and explore this, um, and we're going to set this to be a different number of healthcare workers per patient. So we'll, we're gonna set it partway through to 100. Okay, here we go. Sorry, the snake thing. I, I mean, the window I was doing was just editing this. Um, it, was, it was just editing this, this thing. The, the grant, yeah. Um, okay, we've we've lowered that uh, some. Okay. Um, okay. Um, let's let's now run a scenario where we have initially. Uh, so we have uh, initially. Um, uh, so we'll have one initial, and I'll say HQ, uh, HQ, uh, HCW, healthcare worker. So I'm going to have um, one initially, okay? How do you think that will affect things? If we have one initial healthcare worker, how would it affect things relative to the baseline, to the 50? Do you think we'll have a higher higher uh, prevalence of infection or lower? Much higher. Why is it much higher? Mm -hmm. With one initial healthcare worker, why is it much higher? What happens? Mm -hmm. 
Oh, I missed the chat. Yeah, basically, no one gets treated. Essentially, yeah, it's it's very, very slow treatment. Suppose we had... Suppose we had 200 initial healthcare workers. 100 initial healthcare workers. So... How do you think that will affect things? Four times the baseline number. What do you think that will lead to in terms of dynamics? The infectives will come down to a lower level. Okay. Um, so we have fewer infectives. Okay, that's so so that's good. Um uh yeah um okay uh now i'm going to also look at some of these other scenarios so if we look at the transmission probability scenario we created before um we could also evaluate how those lower it in light of this and what we'd find is some notable effects um, because we have this treatment mediated infection, and if if more people get infected, you get this ripple through effect on treatment times. If we can lower the contact rates or we can lower the transmission probabilities, it pays off directly in lowering new infections, but it pays off also in terms of faster recovery, right? Because we have fewer infectives and therefore faster uh, faster resulting uh, times for recovery. Okay, um, let's uh, continue to uh, explore this. Um, and uh, I'd like to take a look at the effects of vaccination. So we have vaccination in this now. Um, so uh, we're going to have three quarters of the population be vaccinated. That was one, one uh, scenario that we created. And I'd like you to go and explore what we see there. Comments? What's happening here? Oscillation indeed. What's oscillating? So this is showing infective, recovered, and susceptible. But what's helping to drive that? Or what's coupled with it? What's, what's oscillating with it that also drives it? Okay, everything. Yeah, so the prevalence of infection is higher. Does it affect recovery time? Does it affect recovery? Do, do these oscillations include oscillations in mean time to recovery? What do you think? Yes, it could be for seasonal infection. So there's here... Now, mind you, this is only from 7,200 to 7,300, right? Um, uh, we could, we're just seeing a piece of it. But yes, there was oscillations, in, uh, including in recovery and in meantime until recovery that are, are notable here. Um, so we're seeing endogenous oscillations here. And your job will be... Yes, because mean time to recovery is, in fact, is affected by the number of infectives. That's right. That's right. So we see this, these oscillations emerging from this model endogenously. It's producing them in terms of these waiting times are longer at certain times, maybe during the fall and winter when there's higher number of infectives. 
maybe people are circulating more, infecting others, which furthers that effect. But it doesn't last forever. Um, what happens as the number of infections goes up? What happens as the, the day follows the night? As the number of infections goes up, what starts to compensate? What limits the spread of infection? As the number of infectives goes, new infections goes up, it depletes the number of susceptibles and you have a lack of susceptibles. And that ends up drawing down the number of new infections, which draws down the number of new infectives, which draws down the what here? The number of new infectives being smaller draws down the mean time to recovery, which means those infectives who are still around recover even faster. And you get a drop in the number of infectives, right? But then as people lose immunity and there's more susceptibles, you can get rises again in the number of infectives, new number of new infections. There's more and more susceptibles to infect, rises in the number of infections, number of infectives, which drives longer recovery times which means even more people infected and it drives it up, but it's not self-sustained. Okay, I think I'll ask you to explore that a little bit with a take-home exercise, but time is upon us.